In this video, we'll learn all about how to use clipping and masking in Inkscape. Let's start by creating a couple objects. Let's make this one a different color and put it on top of the first one. Then select them both. To do clipping, we can either right click the selection and choose Set Clip, or we can go to Object, Clip, Set. What this does is it uses the top object as a clipping path to clip out all the parts of the bottom object that were outside of the top object. And this is treated as one object, so we can transform it and change its colors like with a normal object. If we switch to the node tool here, we still get the handles from modifying the clipped object. And if we click this button here in the controls bar, we also get the handles from modifying the clipping path. If we want to remove the clipping, we can either right click the object and choose Release Clip, or go to Objects, Clip, Release. Now we have our two original objects back, although they retain any modifications we made to them during the clipping. We can also inverse the clipping. To do this, we first need to turn the top object into a path by selecting it and going to Path, Object to Path. Then select both objects and go to Object, Clip, Set Inverse. As you can see, inverse clipping clips out the parts of the object that the clipping path covers. And the reason we had to change the top object into a path first is that inverse clipping is actually a path effect. We can see this if we open the path effects dialog by going to path, path effects. We can now see that the object has the power clip path effect added to it. Down here, we can turn the inverse clipping off to get back to normal clipping. And we can hide the clipping. For this flatten clip option here, if we turn off inverse clipping, we can see that the bounding box extends beyond the clip shape sum. If we turn this into a path now by going to Path, Object to Path, then switch to the Node tool, we get the nodes of the original clipped object. If instead we wanted to get the nodes of this clipped part, that's where the Flatten Clip option comes in. Let's first undo a couple times so we get the path effect back. Let's check Flatten Clip. The bounding box now contains just the clip shape. If we turn this into a path now, and switch to the node tool, we get the nodes of this path. Clipping is also great for cutting out a certain part of an image. For this, I'll import an image of a gorilla. I've included a link to this image in the description, in case you want to use it to follow along, but you can use pretty much any image for this. Now we can switch to the pen tool and create a path around the gorilla. As this is just a demonstration, I won't worry about getting it perfect. We can now select the path and the image and set the clip. Now we just have the gorilla with the rest of the image clipped out. Another thing with clipping is that if we blur a clipped object, which we can do by opening the fill and stroke dialog with this button up here, then increasing the blur down here, the blurring gets clipped as well. However, if we group this first with this button, it's now treated as a normal object. So if we blur it, the blurring doesn't get clipped. If we ungroup it, the blurring gets clipped again. One more thing we can do with clipping is create what's called a clip group. To do this, we create an object, then right click it and choose Create Clip Group. What this does is it clips the object with a copy of itself, then groups them together. So now we can double click this group to enter it, then add another object in here, and that object will also get clipped. And the original object has actually also been grouped by itself. So if we double click to enter this group, we can change the size of the clipping area. Okay, let's click another object to get outside of the clip group. Now let's move on to masking. Masking is similar to clipping, except whereas clipping doesn't take into account the colors of the clipping path at all, 
Masking lets us use the colors of the mask to determine the transparency of the masked object. The closer to black or transparent the mask is, the more transparent the masked object will become. And the closer to white it is, the more opaque the masked object will be. So if we create an object, then create another object on top of it, make it 50% gray, select them both, and either right click and choose Set Mask, or go to Object, Mask Set. The bottom object gets clipped and becomes 50% transparent. And like with clipping, we can modify this like a normal object. And if we go to the node tool, we get the masked object's handles. And clicking this button in the controls bar gives us the handles for the mask. To release the mask, we either right click and choose release mask, or go to object, mask, release. Like with clipping, we can also do inverse masking. This is more useful with images. So I'll import this grayscale image of trees as an example. I'm going to take this rectangle and put it behind the image and make it bigger. If I select both of these and do normal masking, it looks kind of odd because the trees, which are the darkest part of the image, have become the most transparent. To make it so the trees are the most opaque and the background is the most transparent, we can go to Object, Mask, Set Inverse. This actually doesn't work straight away, but as we can see in the Path Effects dialog, this applied the Power Mask Path Effect to the object. To get it working, you just have to check Inverse Mask here. Now the trees are the most opaque, so it looks better. Another thing we have in here is this Add Background to Mask option. If we turn off the inverse masking, we can see that the object we put at the bottom is completely visible, giving the mask a background, but we can hide it with this option. We can also change the color of the background here, but it seems that it basically just lets us change the opacity of it. Something I like to use masking for is to give a reflection to an object. For example, let's create an ellipse at the bottom of the gorilla for a shadow. Let's make it black. Let's give it a radial fill by clicking this button in the fill and stroke dialog. Now let's switch to the select tool and click this button up here to move the ellipse below the gorilla. Now we can duplicate the gorilla with Ctrl D Flip it vertically with this button, move it down here, and click this button a few times to put it below the top gorilla and the shadow. We can then create a rectangle covering the whole bottom gorilla. Give it a linear fill with this button in the fill and stroke dialog. Switch to the gradient tool here. Bring this first stop to the bottom. Hold Ctrl and bring the other stop to the top, as well as raise this alpha channel all the way up and make it white. Now we can switch to the Select tool. Hold Shift and Alt and click in here to add the gorilla to the selection. Then set the mask. Now the gorilla has a reflection. And as you can see, we can clip our mask and already clipped our masked object. Alright, that should do it for clipping and masking in Inkscape. If you have any questions, or if you know something about clipping or masking that I failed to mention, please let us know in the comments. I hope you found this video useful, and as always, thanks for watching.